Hello, Bill Savage here, giving you a tour of my writerly workspace for Inside for Indies, a video series raising consciousness and hopefully funds for independent bookstores. Uh, my workspace begins in the room where my unconscious mostly works, the bedroom. Uh, and then, of course, there's the 10-step commute to work. Uh, my workspace is also my living room. It is also an art gallery and a library. Um, one friend of mine refers to it as the Bilzeum because it has a lot of artifacts that are all about the things I'm interested in. I also have a great view of a birch tree and I put a bird feeder out to get a little action from the birds. Uh, I've got my baseball bookshelf, my little political shrine to the late Mayor Richard J. Daley with a voter's box, um, a whole lot of baseballs and baseball art, um, other art on the walls as well. And of course, anytime you're going to your workspace, you've got to commute to the most important thing, which is your coffee pot. Uh, sadly, the place I went for so many years, Unicorn Cafe in Emerson, is no more thanks to the situation. And there's me and my mom in Rigby Field. Um, coming back toward my desk with coffee or later in the day another beverage in hand. I've got everything a writer needs, which is a bobblehead of a writer much admired, James Thurber, the typewriter of another writer I much admire, Nelson Ogden, one of the many he owned, um, as well as stuff to distract you. Once again, my view of trees and in the distance like Michigan and birds. Um, so I'm going to take a seat and then uh, talk about independent bookstores and the Christmas season that is coming. So as I look at my workspace a little more closely, Doing something like this always gives you a chance to think about things. I realize my brain still lives in the past. I've got a pencil sharpener. I've got a stapler. I've got the books I'm going to be teaching soon. It's later in the day. I've got a beverage. Uh, I've got my view out my window. And my screensaver is a picture of a view I once had. Um, I've got books I've uh, produced. The Old Time Saloon, an edited edition of George Aid's great book. Uh, Chicago by Day and Night, a book I did with Paul Drica. I've got the books I'm using for the book I'm researching, uh, which I call The City Logical, um, Why Daniel Burnham is Way Overrated. Um, I've got a book I'll read from in a moment, as well as uh, speaking to this moment for us, The Christmas List, divided into naughty and nice. Uh, City Lights Bookstore was the last independent bookstore I went to before COVID-19 shut the country down on a road trip to San Francisco with my sweetheart. Um, inarguably, it is the most important independent bookstore in American literary history. Uh, under the leadership of Lawrence Ferlinghetti, publishing Allen Ginsberg's Howl and countless other books of poetry and prose that have shaped our culture. But every independent bookstore around the country helps shape that culture as well. Independent bookstores are the lifeblood of American literary culture and are the best thing that readers can experience. Uh, browsing in an independent bookstore is nothing like browsing online. You are looking through books that have been selected by a human who has taste, who has knowledge, who has expertise. And as you get to know in booksellers in independent bookstores, they'll make recommendations that aren't algorithms. They're about who you are as an individual and that bookseller's sense of who you are and what you might be interested in. So this holiday season, Christmas, Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, I'd, whatever your gift giving excuse might be, please shop at local independent bookstores. Um, I'm going to be shopping based on geography, uh, bookies and seminary co-op for Southsiders, Women and Children First and Volumes Book Cafe for Northsiders, Comics Revolution and uh, Bookends and Beginnings up in Evanston. Um, those books are one thing. Another thing I'm going to be doing though is gift cards. This will be for my younger gift recipients um, because I want to give them two gifts. I want to give them books, but more importantly, I want to give them the experience of browsing the aisles of an independent bookstore, not knowing what they might find, because that serendipity, that possibility is what independent bookstores provide us all. And now I'm going to read an excerpt from a book that I first bought in an independent bookstore when I was in high school, uh, The Guild Book Complex down on Lincoln Avenue. Uh, still around in the Guild Complex literary organization that Ridge Gibbons and others run. Um, Nelson Algren's Chicago City on the Make. 
Um, I co-edited uh, an anniversary of edition of it almost 20 years ago now uh, with David Schmickens. And the fact that I would, you know, end up co-editing a scholarly edition of a book that I first bought in a Chicago independent bookstore, I think, says it all. That's what it's there for. So my favorite bits from Chicago City on the Make. You can live in a natural home with pictures on the walls, or you can live in a fort, but it's a lead pipe since you can't live in both. You can't make an arsenal of a nation and yet expect its great cities to produce artists. It's in the nature of the overbraided brass to build walls about the minds of men, as it is in the nature of the arts to tear those dark walls down. Today, under the name of security, the dark shades are being drawn. That is all too true. Uh, it's almost 70 years ago now. And independent bookstores are one of the places that fight against the overbraided brass that help connect the minds of men rather than building walls between them. So please support your local independent bookstore. Thanks a million for listening. Bye-bye.